All right, and he is here, our special guest for today's Hot Topic, representing for Ward 5, ladies and gentlemen, council member Kenyon McDuffie. Good morning hey. to you. Good morning, good morning, Angie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. First off, um, you know, me and Shay want to give you a good old H-U. H-U? You, you know. know? Come yes. on now. I, can, I, can, um, I, I still can't say it. I know. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> Sorry, money. You're not a part of the, the that particular <sighs> shout out, money. Uh, however, uh, Kenyon McDuffie is a proud uh, H-U representative. Okay. Alum. Absolutely. And uh, University of Maryland, too, right? University of Maryland Law School. Nice, nice. Okay. And you are a lifelong uh, D.C. resident? I am. Third generation. Watch. Proud, proud, proud native Washingtonian. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And so um, how long have you been the council member for Ward 5? Uh, on May 30th, it will be seven years. Seven uh, years. Seven years. I won a special election on May 15th, 2012. They keep bringing you back. They keep bringing me back, right? <laughs> I got re-elected in 14 and uh, re-elected most recently in November of 2018. So really appreciate all the residents, uh, the 800,000 residents and all the voters in Ward 5. Yeah, now for those who may not know uh, what Ward 5, what is covered in Ward 5, tell us a little bit about your ward sure, and what you sure. guys have going on. So I, I typically say, if you know anything about the metro system, we're on the red line. We've got <laughs> uh, the Fort Totten Metro, we've got Brooklyn Metro, and we've got Rhode Island Avenue Metro, and we're really close to the border around uh, the Noma Metro at uh, Union Market. And so we've got uh, all those areas. We've got uh, the Catholic University area, we've got mm -hmm. Eckington, we've got Bloomingdale, which is recently came up uh, yeah. with, the, with uh, somebody who responded uh, in a certain way yeah. uh, to the to the issue about uh, how universities yard and, and, and whether or not it's uh, should be considered some place that's open for everybody. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a great ward. Uh, we've got a lot of different people, one of the most diverse wards, um, and I've appreciated being there. I grew up there. In fact, yeah. I live in the same house uh, that I grew up in that's been in my family since 1952. Wow. 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 Yeah. So so tell me your first reaction. So it's Friday. We, we showed this video on our, our um, social media. It went viral. Millions of people have seen it um, of a Fox reporter basically going to Howard University and talking to the students who say that they feel like new residents are coming in and using the yard as like their own personal space. They're walking their dogs like it's a dog park. And then this resident that's a part of your ward, um, he basically said, hey, if it's a problem, you need to go ahead. If you got a problem with us, move your whole school out, right. which was kind of which people were in outrage about. But he also said that, you know, we should be working together to come to a resolve, essentially. Well, um, I think he should have started with we should be working yeah, together. That would have been right? helpful. Should have that probably would have been, been helpful. The whole notion that Howard University should, should move is just outrageous. And I think, you know, people were right to be outraged by it. Let's be clear. Um, and it's not just Howard University. Howard is an HBCU, mm -hmm. emphasis on HB, historically black, university that was founded for the education of black people. Remember, we, you know, long ago, before HBCUs were founded, it was hard for black people to get educated right. uh, in college. And even years after HBCUs were established, there yeah. were still schools, predominantly white institutions that discriminated on black people and people of color in general. And so it's important that we have and preserve and honor uh, uh, institutions that are HBCUs, Howard University in particular, because why? It's the Mecca, 1867. Absolutely. It's hollow ground in that yard. Uh, people mention the Divine Nine and all the reasons why you want to respect an institution like Howard University. They haven't had the privilege to attend, to, to take classes in Douglas Hall and Lock Hall, uh, walking around that campus. Uh, you feel it. And mm -hmm. for those who don't feel it, Learn about it. Be yeah. considerate and sensitive to everything that's taking place, all the history there before you make those types of uh, outrageous and really just uh, insensitive comments. Yeah, I was going to say, too, I mean, do you notice this with new residents coming in, right, that, that there is kind of like that lack of understanding of the history of certain landmarks in D.C.? And do you feel like it's a matter of just educating them um, or, or yeah. should they so be kind of doing that? I, I think it's a combination of things. I think most residents are culturally sensitive or at least attempt to understand the communities within which they move and I appreciate that and it's not just white residents necessarily they're yeah. new black residents residents of all races and ethnicities who come into the District of Columbia without the, the appreciation for the fact that you know, we, we, we were chocolate city right yeah. I mean <laughs> D.C. became a majority black city in the 1950s in 1970 we reached about 70% uh, of the population mm -hmm. we're down to less than 48% of the population and so there's a lot of no. uh, angst around that. If you've been here for a while, like you mm -hmm. have, uh, Angie and others have, uh, you understand when we were Chocolate City, you understand mm -hmm. the appreciation of things like go-go mm -hmm. uh, music and what it means, having our own genre of music. You understand whether or not you like it, why mumbo sauce is important to the nation's capital. Right, and, right. and I think there's a certain level of cultural sensitivity and cultural competency that everybody should have. And if you don't, 
uh, regardless of your race, uh, you should get the reaction that you got uh, when that gentleman said what he said. And let's remember, this is important too. Howard University was established in 1867. Uh, uh, the reporter had a, the title said that this, this gentleman, Sean, was from Bloomingdale. Mm-hmm. Well, the Bloomingdale neighborhood is down the street from where I live on North Capitol Street. Howard University was there before the Bloomingdale neighborhood was developed. Mm. Right? Let's, let's, let's be clear that's about that, on that. that <laughs> history, right? So. So that's, yeah, I mean, like Chase said, that's, that's that, that on that. that. <laughs> Let me ask you too, Council Member um, Kenya McDuffie, he's on with us right now, War 5, because um, we talked to Trayon about this as well. He's seeing uh, an increase of kind of, you're in the middle. You're in the middle of native D.C. residents who have been here and they're starting to feel displaced um, or that they're being pushed out. And then you have the new residents who say, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable. This is what I want. Kind of, you know, we're, we're organizing and you know they they hold you to what they want as well what has it been like as a council member um to try to balance the two and where do you see things going as far as dc because to me i'm especially from the go-go thing to the howard situation i'm i'm feeling like more and more tension absolutely is is rising and and you're right and the key word is balance but even before the the go-go don't mute dc uh and and before the the howard university issue think about last year with the washingtonian magazine when they had those t-shirts that Mm. said i'm i'm not i'm not a tourist Tourist, i'm from here here. i live here right i mean no black images represented there no black people represented there and so i appreciated what angel and tony and folks have done around that Treyon was instrumental in that too in fact mm. i was on a text thread with tony Treyon, and a couple other folks who Treyon was like you know we should get our own t-shirts mm. uh, and so i think it's important for folks to rally around that but trying to achieve that balance is important people have a right to move to the district of columbia and district of columbia is the place to be right now our mm. region is still pretty hot when it comes to you know opportunities for employment, opportunities for top-notch institutions like Howard and others, mm-hmm. Georgetown, Catholic and American. Uh, and so people want to be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we want people to come here. On the other hand, we want them to be sensitive to the environment within which they move, under uh, appreciating the culture is important, understanding the people who are here and they're struggling. I'm telling you, Angie, I, I hear it all the time. We are experiencing some of the most socially and economically um, uh, I think anxiety that we're feeling in the District of Columbia right now from people who see uh, their friends, their family being displaced from neighborhoods. And I'm trying to fight uh, to keep people from being displaced. I want new people to move here, and, and that's fine. And, and, and I want my friends who don't live here to move here too. Right. right. So we want to make sure it's a, a city that's welcoming of all. And we, and, and to me, it, it starts with equity. Uh, it starts with uh, racial equity. It starts with uh, understanding that the systems and institutions that were here, the, the, the just the horrible legacy of slavery and Jim Crow segregation created an environment where black people could not build the kind of wealth mm. that white people could, where we were, uh, you know, we were subjugated. And, and now, when you come to the nation's capital, when you come to Chocolate City and you see the opportunities, uh, people appreciated that. But yeah. we have a long way from those opportunities that we we had in the 50s 60s and 70s where we were a chocolate city uh and and now people feel like we're no longer a chocolate city they feel mm-hmm. like we're losing our way that we don't have the same hold economically and socially uh, that we had before and i understand that anxiety having been here uh, and experienced those times and seen uh, things change and so uh, making sure that we work together having mm-hmm. that balance is so important uh, and it all begins with equity it all begins with educational equity making sure that our schools are solid and that everybody has an opportunity to to achieve uh, the american dream and right now people feel like they don't yeah what are some of the questions you hear the most about displacement from original washington don't, 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 uh, it's, don't. it's housing affordability Mm, I mean, it's like, okay. you know, we can't afford to live in the neighborhoods where we grew up. Right. Uh, I told you I live in a neighborhood that in a house that my, my grandparents bought back in 1952 for $5,000. Mm. Right. Their home selling in that neighborhood for $800,000, $900,000. Who can afford that? My wife and I are both college educated. She, she didn't go to Howard, though. She went to, she went to HBCU, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but we both love. college educated. Okay. We love. got dual degrees. <laughs> and, and we couldn't buy our own house for on the market today right and i think that is is part of that anxiety that people are feeling how it's so expensive to live here and how are people going to stay here yeah and, and we're again we, we make you know pretty solid salaries think about the folks who are on the lower ends of the socioeconomic totem pole who who are working at those jobs making minimum wage uh struggling to feed themselves and their families yeah. uh and so so you know really it's about housing affordability and it's about educational equity it's about uh, systems where people feel like they have to enter into a lottery 
mm. in order to get a quality education, yeah. send their kids all the way across town, mm. you know, west of the park in order to get a quality education. And so uh, that's not necessarily the case, but a system that depends on a lottery system to begin with, in my opinion, is inherently inequitable. Kenya McDuffie, man, we appreciate you for being yes. here today. We would love for you to come back. You know, whenever you like, doors open to you. If you want to, if you want to holler at us, let us know what's going on in War Five, and just continuing the conversation because, again, feeling that anxiety. The question becomes: So, what do we do? What right. do we tell uh, residents and natives of DC that that are having this anxiety? So, just you know, as we close out, what would you say to people who are feeling like, man, they have that anxiety, or man, what my Chocolate City is is leaving and it's going and i would say keep pushing keep fighting keep holding people like me who are elected office accountable don't let us off the hook you know what we're here to serve you and if we aren't then obviously deal with us the way that you you should with your vote and i think that's incredibly important let's get the numbers up when we vote let's turn out uh and i have a dc natives resolution that i've I put forward we got yeah. dc council declares may 20th 2019 dc natives day in the district of columbia so i want folks to come out and celebrate mm -hmm. uh and just recognize that there's important cultural uh, elements to being from this city and appreciating uh, how we live together uh, is important. So thank you all for having me. Y'all yeah. are so amazing. It was a, a really <laughs> thank fun Thank you. Thank morning. you for coming. How can we follow you and and, and catch oh. up with you and t and complain? I'm on oh. Twitter. You can complain <laughs> all the time. I'm on Twitter uh, at uh, Kenya McDuffie. I'm on Instagram at KR McDuffie. Uh, just talk to me, holler at me, shoot me a tweet, uh, post on my IG. I'm there. Find me. I'm also always in the ward. So mm -hmm. come find me at some place like Union Noise Bon Grill. You'll find me posted up having a good time talking to folks in War 5. You. you know you. we love that place. Absolutely. <laughs> Kenya McDuffie on 93.9 WKY. Yeah.